Okay, let me share my screen. Let me know all of you are uh, able to see my screen. Yes, sir. We are able to. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, when you registered uh, this course, uh, welcome to course. Uh, welcome to this course. Uh, you would have uh, download this uh, zip file. Okay. Uh, please let me know if uh, if any one of you not able to download it. Uh, I will help you out. Okay, please let me know. Most of the people I I, um, I was able to download it. I guess some people uh, send the request for uh, increase the download limit. I did for few people which they were facing uh, um, a downloading issue. Okay, and so you would have downloaded this course and underscore download dot zip file. So this contains almost all the source code. Okay, and apart from that. You need to uh, say uh, for the environment setup. Okay, so either you can set up the environment by scratch. I will, I'm going to explain you the steps. Okay, or there is a pre-built VM which you can download and import it on your uh, machine. Okay, so if you are using a laptop to set up the environment. Okay, so you can extract the course underscore uh, download dot zip file. And one year, once you extract, you will find a folder called download, course download. And inside that, there is a folder called ecom real time case study. Okay. So under this folder, there are multiple subfolders. Uh, just first, we'll focus on the docs folder, documents folder. And you will find one PDF where it's, it's basically giving the overview of our use case project. And then you have to start from this file, which is a ecom underscore real time case underscore study underscore project setup underscore v1.txt. So once if you open this file, okay, so there are there is a prerequisite. Tree, okay, so example, if you want to set up your uh, uh, project, the the environment from scratch, uh, you should have the um, Ubuntu 20.04 uh, Linux operating system with uh, login sudo user name as uh, data making okay so if you want to just start from this uh, installation right from installing python followed by mysql and other stuff right? or if you want to set up the uh, if you want to use the our uh, this is one way and another way is uh, if you want to use the pre built as i mentioned earlier you can just go and download the pre built vm from this a Google Drive. Okay, so if you open it in a browser, I will get to minimize this. So you would have seen this uh, data making VM three iPhone new dot zip. Okay, so this is the file which I downloaded. So this is the uh, file which I downloaded. And uh, if you extract this file, you will get a data making vm3.ova file, which is the pre-built VM in the form of .ova file. It's a virtual machine image file. Okay. So this you can import and directly you can use the user, user ID as password and uh, sorry, user name as data making and password as data making. And uh, you can use this machine. So how to import this virtual machine on your uh, laptop i given you the uh, steps uh, in this uh, video okay so you can uh, follow through the okay Okay, so so if you look at this uh, playlist, you can actually import. This, you can use this uh, uh, the part number six, where it will help you to import the virtual machine um, image file 
into the Oracle uh, VM VirtualBox software. Okay, so what you need to do is we need to install this software. Someone is new to the what is Oracle VM VirtualBox? It's a basically a virtualization software where you can have host uh, the another operating system on the your existing operating system as a virtual machine, right? Which will help you to create a virtual machine and install a different operating system than what you have it in a, your uh, laptop or desktop. Okay. So you can here you can import the whatever the virtual machine you downloaded. Anyone have any questions till now? Okay. Okay, I assume uh, all are, all of you are able to get it. Okay, now uh, now let's start from the uh, installation of uh, this. Okay, so one is Python. Uh, first, what you need to do is uh, you need to to install this uh, Python uh, uh, machine on Ubuntu. As I mentioned, you need to have the Ubuntu operating system. Uh, so what you need to do is for people who want to do from scratch, so they can go and uh, uh, create a virtual machine. Okay, this is the virtual machine that I created. Okay, and install the Ubuntu operating system with the username as uh, data making. If you want to do that, follow the same playlist uh, from the line uh, from the uh, video number. Uh, so you can you can follow the uh, part. Part five, which is which will help you to install the uh, Oracle virtual box, and then you can come to the uh, part number seven, which will create a virtual machine and install the Ubuntu operating system. The version I'm using is 20.04 LTS. Okay, and then followed by I created a, a each video for uh, installation. So I'm just going walk, going to walk through this step. But if you want to just to, uh, do it in the offline, you can go and watch these videos, which will help you to install the different uh, uh, runtime environments like Python, Java, Scala, and also uh, components like Apache, Hadoop, Spark, and Kafka, which we, were, we are going to use it in this use case project. So before uh, we start this, uh, before I start explaining about these steps, we, I will walk you through the a project, then we will come back here, okay? So when you want to uh, start How working on- How much disk space will be used, sir? For Sorry? How much Sorry? disk space is required, sir? Uh, you need basically, uh, um, I would say, uh, just see, generally for inserting operating system, 10 GB is enough. But when you assign 10 GB, right, mostly the OS installation itself will consume all the space. So I would request uh, at least 50 GB of uh, disk space you can use it. Uh, uh, if you want to uh, um, have it, you can have at least 50 to at least start with from 50s. But I would suggest 100 GB so that you can have some data if you want to analyze some data, right? So you can store it in, if you want to store some data, which is there in local, uh, then I would suggest you to have a 100 GB. So for me, initially, when I built this, uh, the image file, which I shared with you all in the, through Google Drive, I allocated 75 GB for uh, this uh, virtual machine. Okay, uh, so till 75 GB, this uh, virtual machine can accommodate. So in my local machine, uh, Yesterday, I for the installation steps, I started I started uh, building this virtual machine from scratch. So I allocated 100 GB for it as a disk space. Uh, for memory, it's based on what is uh, how much memory you have it in the laptop. So I I would suggest if you have a 8 GB of uh, RAM in your machine, allocate 4 GB at least, so that uh, your uh, working with the virtual machine will be uh, faster and smooth since i have a 12 gb of ram in my laptop so i allocate at 6 gb got it yeah thank you oh hi shiva 
Yeah. So, is there any alternatives for uh, because uh, uh, in my system I have the only four GB RAM? Okay. Okay. So, so you you can use cloud. Uh, we have the pay, free tiers in the cloud, so yeah. So bring... correct. So yeah, you can address my name as Pari. Okay, basically, uh, my full name is Pari Margu. You can address me as Pari. And yeah, as uh, um, um, uh, Magendra Red mentioned, uh, if you don't have a local laptop with the sufficient RAM, and disk is available. The next option I would suggest cloud. Okay, so you can use any cloud provider and create a, a virtual machine uh, <coughs> with the, uh, uh, so one is uh, create a VM, uh, like example, take a, if you are familiar with the, Amazon AWS uh, uh, cloud provider. So you can create an EC2 instance, okay, uh, with the Ubuntu operating system, and you can start in installing these components. Okay, that is one option. And otherwise, you can create a Windows VM and import this uh, virtual machine also in the Windows VM in the cloud. So there are two options available. So based on your convenience, uh, you can start using it. Okay, so there is a, uh, I have another uh, uh, YouTube channel, okay. It is called, uh, yeah, with here on the left. So there is a, a YouTube channel called Spark FAQs, uh, Spark Frequently Asked Questions. Here I build that one place, playlist, okay, where how can you um, create this uh, uh, single node, say whatever we, I did it on here, right? Whatever I did it on here, how to create a, a simple virtual machine here and install the Adobe software. So this will be a one choice for you. So you can uh, start using this. Okay, so people who don't have sufficient uh, uh, RAM on your laptop and uh, disk space, you can use that. Uh, does it answer your question? I will share this uh, link also uh, with the group so that, so that you can start following it. Whatever the steps I used, it's very, very similar to this, whatever the steps I given it in this, these files. In fact, I just modified whatever I used it here. Okay, so wherever I said this, I would have used the Spark version 3.2 point something. Here we are installing Spark 3.3.0. So only minor uh, difference in the steps is required here. Uh, and if you face any issues, I'm always uh, uh, there to help you. You can follow that. Any other question? Okay, so I assume um, I can uh, proceed further. Okay, so what is the next thing we are going to do? Um, I will just, whatever uh, PDF we have it here. Um, okay, so whatever PDF. I just have it in a PPT, so I just open this. Okay, so <clears throat> sorry. So the building a real time sales dashboard using uh, Apache Spark and Kafka and uh, uh, Python uh, Django. So basically what I build is uh, uh, consider the, uh, uh, okay, consider uh, there is a, um, 
e-commerce uh, portal so it can be a uh, uh, like a portal like uh, um, Amazon.com, Amazon.com, or Amazon.in. Right, or it can be here yeah, in or on. <coughs> or you can take it as a Flipkart. Any any e-commerce portal, right? Okay, so when the e-commerce e portal whenever we order any uh, product here so what happens is uh, there are uh, uh, different cate category of data is captured during the uh, order you make on the portal okay so one is inventory data like say example when you buy some particular product so the inventory has to be uh, get reduced here right if you have inventory db Right. And then, uh, then you you might also have uh, um, the payment gateway details, right? The payment details that will say, will say payment details. Okay, payment details. You will have uh, a one is basically a uh, order DP or order details to capture the order details okay here like, uh, this kind of data is captured whenever you make a transaction or, or, or make an order in this web portal okay so uh, one we know why we are capturing inventory data so basically so whenever i have this example i have 10 products so if one product is purchased so i need to make the quantity as uh, uh, nine and so on so it will go and then once the, all the products are over then it has to show out of stock and then i have to bring it from the warehouse so that is for, for tracking the product we have to make the inventory db and payment details whenever the customer makes the transaction i need to make use of the i need to store the construction uh, sorry payment details so that i can track that uh, order details like say um, apart from product okay so product details with uh, the details are captured in order data so using this data we can do some kind of analysis say example somebody is about the project uh, sorry about the product okay so whether he has product uh, by, bought the product with some other items okay so uh, then in the future uh, we can actually check with the other customers order and you can find some correlation okay so there are a lot of analysis you can do based on the uh, data you capture on this okay so that that is the main motive of uh, this use case okay so you can consider any e-commerce portal or uh, 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 online stores where the transaction is happening okay and uh, how do you capture the data and then how do you process the data Okay, so that's uh, our uh, motive of uh, this use case. Anyone have any questions? I this call this this entire data is <coughs> the sales data. That's why I just kept <coughs> real time analysis of. Uh, uh, sales data. <clears throat> I'm sorry if my um, little throat problem and just bear with me. Fine, <clears throat> fine. So I assume uh, we can continue with the uh, um, next clip. So I'll just make sure I have the recording going. Okay, fine. Yeah. So we have the sales data, right? Or the order data. Now we want to do the analysis and find out some insights. There are two kind of analysis. One is, okay, we are storing the order details in a databases or any persistent storage. We can do the offline analysis. Means um, offline, when I say offline analysis, uh, so you store the data in the late, uh, uh, late hours, maybe the 
night, you can run a nightly jobs. They also call it as batch jobs, right? We can do either batch analysis where you capture the entire day data and run the, uh, the analysis job or the um, uh, reports job in the night and generate the report so that it is available for next day, okay? So example today is the 30th uh, July. So you capture the 30th July record and process in the night and make the available data tomorrow so so that people can go and review the uh, the reports and find out okay what has happened yesterday on this uh, e-commerce portal or the store that is batch analysis or offline analysis whatever the analysis you and the second is okay whenever the transaction is happening then uh, uh, at the same time right Do, in the real time just bear with me there is some you know, vehicle is going on <clears throat> i'm sorry for the background so <clears throat> that is uh, real time processing okay so as soon as the data is captured we want to process the data okay that is real time analysis or stream processing whatever uh, terminology they use it so we want to do the real time analysis so first we need to okay <clears throat> so this meeting will get over uh, with 10 minutes so as i mentioned please use the same link and rejoin the meeting now what we need to do is we need to uh, capture this data right so we were we are going to uh, so we have to capture this real time data okay and uh, either store it in database and process or you can process in real time okay so we are using uh, Spark streaming here. Okay, so Spark is the Apache Spark is the one component of Flamer, which will help you to do both batch processing analysis and stream processing analysis. So it's basically a, a computing framework or a kind of a, a data processing engine or framework. So we are using Spark structure streaming mainly. We are using structure streaming. I hope everybody is having basic understanding of uh, Spark. Uh, if uh, people are, anyone, if you are very new, uh, so Spark is basically uh, meant for uh, for building the solutions for uh, batch processing and uh, stream processing. And also we can do some kind of machine learning uh, implementation also. Okay, so <clears throat> we want to, uh, why we are using Spark Structure Streaming? Uh, as soon as the data is generated in uh, real time, we want to capture the data and store it in the uh, any uh, persistent storage and do processing. Or whenever you capture the data, capture the uh, stream data, and then uh, do the processing. do the processing on fly and then store the uh, store the aggregated data in any persistent storage okay so this is another way okay so uh, storing the data which is you capture in real time and storing in any persistent data uh, persistent medium uh, it can be a normal uh, uh, the distributed storage like uh, SDFS or any object storage like S3 in uh, AWS or a blob storage in uh, um, uh, Azure Cloud or uh, Google storage in uh, GCP. All of these are object storages you can store. So this process, capturing the data from any source and storing it in any persistent storage called data ingestion. So there is a terminology called data ingestion people will call in this uh, uh, data uh, 
processing uh, discipline. So data ingestion, nothing but you capture data from any data source and store it in a particular uh, storage. So then take the data from the where you stored and do the processing. So we, generally that's data processing, right? So structure streaming can use both. So you can use, a, you can build a pipeline or a, a, that a job which can do just data ingestion. Take the data from here and store it in particular uh, uh, DB or uh, file storage. Or capture the data and do the processing and store it in the database or any file storage. Okay, so so there is so that is the two things, right? Uh, now before we uh, are directly consuming the data, uh, capturing the data from this. Uh, uh, sources right it can be an any sensor which is generating data so what we took is basically e-commerce data right you can think of as a any sensor uh, it can be industrial sensor or the uh, sensors which is available in your home which emit the data in a certain interval okay right so those type of data also called as stream data so any device which emits the data in low frequency right in the with the low latency that's called stream data so it can be a, a data generating from sensors or it can be a data generating from any uh, applications. You capture the data, okay? Uh, so you can directly capture or then really what we do is we in between we use uh, the layer called the message layer. Messaging layer right so here we use uh, any uh, messaging system so generally nowadays people have started using the distributed messaging system uh, messaging system so like Kafka, okay. So in our case, we are going to use uh, the messaging uh, component as a Kafka. Okay, so so we have four minutes. Fine. <laughs> so <clears throat> we are going to, use, going to use as the Kafka as a distributed messaging system. So why we use? So basically. Uh, whenever we consume the data directly from uh, that stream source, there might be a chance of uh, uh, the your job, either data ingestion job or streaming job, can go down. Right? There is a failure is uh, always uh, we cannot avoid it in certain cases. So that time you may lose the stream data. Right? We don't want to use the uh, stream data. Uh, that's the reason we are using messaging layer. The messaging layer going to act as a some kind of buffer. So you store the data, you make uh, data to be stored on this message layer. Then the, the streaming job can consume the data from this message layer. So basically it is called a publish and subscribe mechanism. So if, if you learn about the de uh, definition of Kafka, they mentioned it's a distributed messaging system, act as a, or uh, work in the uh, discipline of publish and subscribe creation, right? So some system will be publishing the data on Kafka, which generally they call it as producers. So the terminology, they call it as producer, right? Any application can act as a producer, then publish the data to Kafka. And any application can consume the data, which is published in the Kafka topic. So all referred as a consumers, right? So you can have n number of consumers who can take the data from the Kafka. So Kafka is acting as a kind of message buffer or a middle layer, a middle um, uh, middleware or whatever you call it. So in Kafka, we have multiple terminologies. I will introduce you uh, when we uh, look into the Kafka uh, topic special, especially. Okay. So to, uh, there are uh, five things you need to understand in Kafka. One is a Kafka producer, <clears throat> which I told you any application who produce the data to Kafka. They are called as producer and Kafka broker or Kafka server, right? So again, Kafka is another library or framework 
which you configure in a, in a, a machine. So Kafka also can be configured in a, a cluster of machines. So multiple Kafka servers can be configured to work as a cluster. So Kafka uh, server is a server which will store your uh, data. And there is a, <coughs> uh, another terminal called Kafka topic. Topic is nothing but kind of container where it is going to store your data. Okay. So, and another terminology you need to understand is partition, right? So, internally, Kafka is partitioned into a <coughs> different segment. That means, so we, if we want to split the data into multiple, because we are using a dis, uh, distributed computing, which is a cluster of machine is there. So, we want to store the, whenever you store the data in Kafka topic, we want to store it in a, uh, <coughs> split the data into store it in multiple machines so that it can support the fault tolerance. And another terminology we want to understand is consumer. That is application which consumes the data from the Kafka topic. Okay, so I will stop here. So there's only one minute left in this session. So please uh, join the same link so that we will discuss uh, uh, our next step, okay? I hope uh, that's uh, okay for everyone. I'll just stop the session. Please join with the same link. Yeah, sure.